friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. We've got a new project in and I don't have a clue what we're dealing with yet because I have not looked at it. The box came in, I've opened the box this far, but as you can see it's covered up with stuff and I have not looked below the covering yet. So we'll all discover at the same time what we're dealing with. We've got, uh, let's see here, I'll try to cover up the customer's name and address here. Looks like it came from Iowa and I think he's got the label inside here. Apparently it's a violin, I think, and uh, almost have to be in a box that small. And here's the label. It's made expressly for William Lewis and Son, Chicago, Illinois, in Mittenwald, Germany, number 125. That's kind of neat, and we should be able to put that back in. I'll keep that in this envelope here for now. Um, tailpiece, tuning peg, sound post. Use any if you can or new at your discretion. Okay, it's got a new loop on it. And it's your typical old uh, deal here. Uh, Kephart's Music Center, it says on the, on the uh, tailpiece. So this is obviously not original to the uh, violin. Here's the... Uh, Sound post, which is about the size of a 2x4, that's a really large sound post. Someone just obviously homemade that and put it in there. The tuning pegs don't look all that good at all. There's two that are totally handmade, you can see. And they're not ebony or anything. And then there's four here. No, actually there's three there. There's... I... I'm not sure what to make of this so far until we get into it, but there, there's three handmade ones and three uh, regular ones. Okay, let's see what all we got in here. Get all the junk out. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh boy, I've seen this before. Here we go. That's just how it arrived. Look at that. Complete with the mouse hole and everything. I have seen the mouse hole before, believe it or not. I repaired a really, really nice old violin in my early, early days that had a big mouse hole chewed through it. And when I got done, you couldn't tell there had ever been a mouse hole in there. Now, the back is completely loose, and worse than that, it's out of alignment. It's, uh, well, I mean, it looks like it can be aligned, but uh, it's, it's, under, it's under pressure. And this is, of course, broke all the way through here, broke here, broke here. I will talk to the customer. If it's a sentimental issue, then it's probably worth fixing. But if it's not a sentimental issue, then this may not be worth putting a lot of money into. But we'll see. Okay, do we have a neck? Yes, we do have a neck. And, and that's the last thing in here. Yeah, the neck's a little, oh boy, nasty. Moldy, it's real moldy up in here, and there's all kinds of nasty dirt down in there. It's just mildewed, very badly mildewed, as you can see there, milled mold, mold or whatever that is. I got the okay from the customer to go ahead with this, uh, I guess we'll call it a basket case fiddle. <laughs> it's in... Uh, Pretty rough shape. I went ahead and disinfected it. It had mold all over it, even all over the fiddle. And so I've knocked the vast majority of that mold off, although I think there's still plenty of mold on the inside. On the back, the only problem I see is this main seam. It doesn't line up real good. Uh, like this side is higher than that side. I don't know if that's apparent in the video. But I think I might be able to glue that in place without taking it apart. The other option would be to take, go ahead and take this top off because this top's in bad shape. I mean it's broke through here, uh, through here. I don't know if it's broken this side. I don't see a break but then the, it's got the mouse holes so I don't really know which way I want to tackle it. The sad part of it is is that this the top and the back both appear to be glued very well to the sides. I don't see any loose spots at all, which is so ironic considering how busted up this thing is. 
What I say has happened here is this thing was kept in a very damp basement or even a wet basement, got flooded or something, and this wood has uh, expanded and busted. It's busted to the point where this crack here, it's misaligned. The purfling there you can see is out of alignment even. Um, it's, it's quite a mess. And just, you know, there's a million different ways to skin every cat. I'm just trying to find the easiest, quickest way, and, and I'm not sure what that is. I'm halfway tempted to just go ahead and glue this back seam in place like it is and get that solid to the sides, then take the top off. Because I'm afraid if I take it all apart, then everything may come apart, you know. Then you got a lot more work. I think I can get this back to line up pretty darn good. I'm going to kick it around a little bit here and make my decision. I think I've decided to fix this one from the outside. You can see this little clamp that I've made here. It's, uh, you know, right now I just barely have any pressure on it, just tightening it up, and it tightened the seam up really good. And I just, I've never owned any of these clamps, and I've always, I've seen them, and I thought, you know, those would be handy under certain circumstances. Well, this is the certain circumstance, so I've decided to make myself some clamps. I've just got some of these little metal rods. they got hooks on the ends. I'm cutting the hooks off, putting threads on them, and putting these little uh, pieces of plastic on there that, uh, I think it's Delrin plastic that I uh, machined out to make them uh, work out real good. So here's the process for making these clamps. I have my little 832 die on here, threaded on, and I just spin it around, put a little oil on there, by the way, and uh, then I just cut the threads on there. I just kind of using this as my gauge. About halfway down that block is what I'm going. That's about halfway. Really doesn't make that much difference. And then I cut it off to length and I put new threads on it again so don't know if you're familiar with what you know that's what a die looks like there to cut the threads and then I have these these are 832 threads and so then I have some 832 wing nuts to go on those threads hopefully this will go right on there haven't tried it yet obviously I'm having trouble lining them up for some reason every time but they go right on and then they spin right down well, I'm not going to lie to you. It took a little time to make those clamps. Uh, more time than I thought it would take. But it's something I should have done probably, you know, 20 years ago, to be perfectly honest with you. I've always made do without these kind of clamps in the past. I've had other ways to get around it. And I just thought, you know, it's high time that I just get me some of these clamps. So, fortunately, I had enough of this Delrun plastic. I have those uh, little, I would say, roughly a little bigger than an eighth inch rod. I'm not sure how big they are, about a three sixteenths, I think. Maybe, maybe a little bit bigger than that even. And anyway, I threaded them and put the nuts on there, and you can see how it really pulls that crack up tight and does a nice job. Then I put this um, hose over it. It's uh, just a little plastic hose, uh, you know, aquarium line or whatever you want to call that. And uh, anyway, I put that over it uh, just to keep it from scratching anything, and uh, it seems to be really good. I haven't glued it yet, but I'm going to put the glue on it now and give it a shot. And yes, I know, hide glue is the traditional glue. I don't use hide glue, generally speaking, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, people complain that you can't take tight bond apart, but that's just completely wrong. It's, you know, they make up these things and they have their reasons I'm sure but you can take tight bond apart almost as easy as you can take hide glue apart it just takes heat and moisture and you can get it apart no problem so I use tight bond simply because I feel like it's a very good superior glue um, you know it's my opinion everybody's entitled to their opinion if you you know absolutely don't like using a wood glue on a violin? Well then, don't send it to me. That's the best way I can explain it. I guarantee my work, and uh, my work doesn't have an expiration date. So if I fix something on your instrument and it comes apart, you send it back and I'll fix it. 
So I wouldn't make that claim with hide glue and I don't know any other luthiers that use hide glue that make that claim. Not knocking hide glue, trust me, I'm not knocking it. I think hide glue is an excellent glue. I don't use it. That's all there is to it. No, I got nothing against it. I think it's a very good glue. Just want to be clear so that you understand. I just think tight bonds superior. I think it's easier to work with and uh, it's a little more forgiving and yet it holds like iron. These clamps seem to be working beautifully. Really, really good. And I'm getting squeezed out along the whole joint here. I am going to take the whole top off this, and so you might be saying, well, why did you glue it back together now? Well, I just felt like this was going to help stabilize it and stabilize the sides. And then I'm going to, the top is a separate issue. It's broke so many places, and it needs this wood replaced and all kinds of issues on the top. The back only had this one issue, and that's why I figured it was easy to fix it right now and then move on. Well, I'm waiting for that back to dry. I'm looking at this... Uh, fingerboard and it's exceptionally thick. When you see it on here you can tell it was added on and it's pretty thick. It's big and clunky and heavy. You know everything on a violin ought to be dainty and, and lightweight. So anyway we're going to uh, knock that down some. It's also not been cut back up in here. I like to see that cut back in there too to lighten it up. You know I'm going to probably bring this back around like so something like that and we'll cut all that out of there too and that'll lighten it up some more so we can do that with my finger planes got my finger plane here and uh, This finger plane is very good, but I need to sharpen it. I, it's brand, it's you know new. The customer sent it to me, and I haven't ever taken it to the uh, to the hone yet, and it needs to be sharpened. So it's a little bit dull to be using on this really really hard wood. This one here, I'll cut it real good. Almost, almost. A smooth transition now. Eh, I feel like the blade's gone back up in there a little bit. It's not cutting again. There's no transition line there that you can feel now. I'm going to take it to my sander and I'm just going to lay it on here and try to cut one continuous cut back to here, but it'd be more at this end. I took about 30 thousandths off the thickness of this, which uh, 40 thousandths would be about a millimeter. So it's about three-fourths of a millimeter, I guess you'd say, that I took off of this. That feels better. It looks better on the edge to me. Maybe even a hair on the big side still, but not bad. Not bad now. It was clunky before, but now it's, it's not too bad. So, you know, it's kind of a, a by-eye type of thing, and uh, that's looking pretty good to me. I may take more off of it once I get it mounted back up and all that, but for now, that's good enough. Well, it's the next day, and I took the clamps off, and they worked great, but i got to be perfectly honest. They did create a little problem. Even though I had the vinyl tubing over these, they did leave marks, and I'm surprised at that, really. But it may be that the actual vinyl is what reacted to the finish. And the reason I say that is because I know plastics will react to certain things because it actually looks like it almost maybe even melted the finish in each of those locations. So I'll have to do something differently in the future. This was the perfect instrument to try it on because the finish is just garbage on this thing anyway. But. Uh, Anyway, it is what it is. It did create a little problem, and I can fix that, though. I don't think that'll even show up when I'm done. It's been a few days, and it's time to try to take this top off. You know, you get feelings about things. You either think it's going to go well, or you think it's going to be tough. Well, this one, I think, is going to be tough. It, it, it's really odd to me that it really looks like it's had a moisture issue 
way too much moisture, yet it there's not a single crack in this anywhere. So, wow, I just, I don't know. It's gonna be hard to get apart. If, that, if all that water didn't get something loose, then how much uh, trouble is it gonna be to do that? going to be a basket case uh, coming apart there came apart fairly good there was a couple of tear outs it, it is what it is it was in bad bad shape but when we're done here none of that's going to matter it's going to be really nice one of the problems with trying to glue this up it's very hard to clamp very hard to align and you know it's just difficult because everything's on a curve you know it's not flat the only thing that's flat is this outside edge well then i tried to set it down on a flat surface and it wouldn't sit down because of this tall brace so it does it rocks you know so what i did was i channeled out this area here on this board and now i can set this down in here flat in that channel and the, the edges are on the flat surface now and that really makes it a lot better for lining this up. And then when I clamp it, I think that'll help me too on my clamping because it's on a flat surface here. And, and I may have to do an unconventional type of clamping. I may have to drive some nails down in this uh, plywood, push this over tight, and then push, you know, force this over tight and maybe put some more pins in it here. Wheezing it, causes it to torque in weird ways and it doesn't stay flat. What I did was I traced the outline of the violin on here. I don't know if you can see that in the camera very well. I'm going to now just drive a, a series of nails in those in that pencil line. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try to be very precise and drive them just where the pencil line is just inside the nail. It doesn't take that many. Just a few strategically placed nails should work. That may be good. Let's see what that's like there. It looks pretty good. That's pretty darn nice. It, it feels like it's making contact with most of them. Maybe not every one. Like this one here doesn't look like it's making any kind of contact. That's okay. It's it's only it's just got to be there to have something to push against, and that feels pretty solid. Now, if we put this back in here, then I can push over against that and it looks like it's lining up pretty well and then if, if it's dipping down I can put a little wedge under here to lift it up or you know I you just have to get creative with ideas on how to make it work. I could glue a couple of blocks in here and actually leave them a little ways away from touching and then put a wedge in here to force it over and just use some and just glue these down with super glue. Okay what I did was draw a straight line across here where the edge of this would be and I'm going to come back off of that line, oh, not quite a quarter, you know, a little over an eighth of an inch, I guess. And I'm going to glue some blocks in here. good there's a little wrinkle in it I don't like kind of like an under dip there a little bit I'm not sure if we can get that out of there with 
some other kind of a deal. Not really because the brace is in the way. It's not real bad. It's just no it is noticeable though. But see, mocking it up like this dry is if it doesn't work dry, then it's probably not going to work uh, wet. <laughs> so, got a little more time to work with it here dry like this and test your idea. This doesn't look too bad, but you always want it better, you know, just the way it is. The crack itself is closed up real nice. Not too bad. I think we'll just have to go with that. I added a clamp on both ends to keep it flat because it was it was wanting to buckle up in the right where the crack was, and that seemed to really make a difference. It even caused more glue squeeze out. I think it's about as good as you could possibly do. It's just another lesson in creative clamping. All right, I went to lunch. This has been sitting for a couple hours now, a little over two hours, maybe two and a half. I'm going to go ahead and take it apart and uh, see what we ended up with. Looks like it uh, glue might have squeezed out right under this edge here and caused it to glue down. Probably here too. Uh, fortunately not too big a deal. And yeah we got a good glue squeeze out across there so we can clean that up no problem. I don't think that's going to be a problem now. I think that's good and solid. I've made up a similar, I've taken, well I just took the same board basically and make, knocked the blocks off of there and now I'm trying to get it to line up. I've got this side, you know, with the nails there where I can push it into those nails and it, it fits real good and snug, doesn't move. And when I push this side into it, it, it actually lines up pretty good, but not perfect. It's touching down here, there's a gap right here it appears to be touching the rest of the way up through here. Uh, but there is a pretty good gap here, so something's not perfectly straight or something. It's warped or something. So what I'm going to try to do is take a piece of sandpaper like this. This is 220. I'm going to lay it on this flat surface right here. And I'm going to try to hold this square to the top and just rub it across here nice and slow. And see if that'll knock off some of that. And do the same thing on this side. Get it held square to the top. And see if that does it. You know what? It, it wasn't a very big gap, so I don't want to take off a ton of material. And I just want to see how that looks and see if that looks better. Matter of fact, that might be good enough. It seems like it's still just a little touchy down here at this end. Just take a nice light pass like that. <coughs> Get it flat. Nice little pass like that. It's really close to fitting up and a little bit will go a long way at this point. And that looks like that's just about as perfect as you're going to get it. Kind of got the same predicament. How am I going to tighten this up? And I could do pretty much the same kind of thing. I could put some blocks there and uh, wedge it together. But because this surface is so curved, I don't know if I want to use blocks. I may just use some of the nails and put a wedge in between the nail. And uh, I think that may be sufficient on this.
trick is getting it lined up across that joint. That's the hardest part. If you can get that lined up, then it usually goes pretty good. Well, there you have it. Um, these nails here, you know, spread out the pressure so that there's plenty of pressure points going that way. These two here apply the pressure in the two high bouts. The center was touching pretty good anyway, so it's already touching pretty hard. And then when I pushed these two ends down, that pulled that together. I got good squeeze out all the way down the joint. It looks real good and it's lined up really good. I'm real happy with the lineup. It's, you can't even feel it. So that's just about as good as it gets on something like that. Now we'll just let that set. In case you're wondering, these two clamps, as always, have leather on them. And uh, so everything's good. We'll just let it set. Probably just let it set overnight. The customer asked me to put the original label back in this. And here's a good look at it. It um, looks to me like the label actually went right here because of the staining and the, the discoloration of the top that I can see. It looks like it laid exactly like that. Now that covers up the other little Made in Germany label that's there. But maybe that was on purpose, you know. This little Made in Germany label and then this laid over the top of that because... This is a, you know, it says made expressly for this company, and maybe they put their own label over the top of the one that just says made in Germany. I don't know. But I'm looking everywhere else, and that's the only place this label looks like it goes uh, as far as staining and everything, and even the back staining matches this staining. Because of that, and because it's all the evidence that points that way, that's where I'm going to put it. I've got some liquid hide glue that I'm going to use for the label. And uh, it seems to work really good for that purpose. I've checked and it lines up in the hole with, uh, with the top, with the F hole. So if you're concerned about that, that's already been looked at. What I do, especially if I'm putting a label on through the sound hole, is I reach in with a paintbrush and I paint it down. Now this brush wouldn't fit through the sound hole obviously, but whatever size I can get through the sound hole. But because I'm open here, I'm using a paintbrush to, to get all the air bubbles and everything out and that really makes a label lay down really nice. You'll be surprised how nice that works on a label. Permanently affixed, I don't think it'll ever come loose again. And the fact that we covered up the little Made in Germany sign is not a big deal because this one also says, you know, in Mitten uh, Wild Germany. So it is what it is. And I'm pretty positive that's where that label went originally. I made this sanding board years ago. It's a good flat piece of wood. And it's got good sandpaper on it. Looking it over, this piece of side is not real tight to the block, so I'm going to work on cleaning that out and getting this joint glued up good and tight right here. I took my X-Acto knife, worked it in these cracks here, cleaned them out as good as I could. I can press on them now and I can see them going all the way shut, so I feel like they're in pretty good shape. I'm going to use the nozzle of the tight bond glue to act like a syringe and force the glue back in the crack. And I think it's going to work just fine in this case. If it doesn't work or doesn't get back in there far enough, then I just take a little brush and work it back in there some more. And I can see it coming out on the inside in there. So when you can see the glue coming out on the inside, you know you're getting good penetration. Once you get that, then you want to clean off your excess glue. Now, on a thing like this, it's difficult to clamp it. This, you know, to put the clamp on here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to roll off this, this edge, and uh, it's just not going to want to stay clamped good. So if you put something over there that the clamp can hit on also, then that will help. 
At least I think it will, and uh, we'll see. And I'm putting leather on the front side because I don't want that to be messed up. And uh, yeah, putting that extra little piece in there really helps. And boy, this glue squeeze out like crazy if you can see it in there. So yeah, it worked really good. Now that's only clamping the bottom part. Okay, I leaned the big clamp over a little bit so I had room to get the little clamp in there on the top part. And I've got it working good too, and it's squeezing out just fine. So that joint looks real tight now. So now we just got to give it time to set up and do its thing. Incidentally, up to this point on this, it may look like we've spent hours and hours and hours of work, but I don't think I'm quite at three hours work yet. So it's not too bad, really. I've, we've got a lot accomplished here really quickly. What I think I'm going to do, I've cut a piece of quarter sawed spruce that I think will match this color and everything pretty good. So, you know, it's always going to be a little lighter when you get a new piece of wood compared to an old piece of wood. Fixing this mouse hole is one of the things that I think is the most fun to do on an instrument is uh, to try to patch in something that's just not there and do it as well as you can. Of course you want your grain lines going the same way of course. What I think I'm going to do first is square these lines up and make it kind of like a diamond shape. Put this in here, draw the shape on here, cut it out, put it in there and then go to town carving it like it's supposed to be. We'll see how it works. It's just a guess at this point if it's going to work at all. see I've cut out the little piece I've left the lines just barely show it's looking pretty good now we will try to hand fit it in there <clears throat> basically the idea is to fill this whole area and then we'll read and glue it in there let it set and then we'll redraw the lines that we want and we'll bring it back out to those lines I mean you could do one side at a time and that might even be better and I might even change and do that here in a minute I don't know but uh, right now, I'm going to just see what I can do about making it all fit in there in one piece. I might change, though. You just never can tell on something like this. I might go ahead and cut it in half. I don't know. I, I can see benefits both ways, but I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it in, in half so that I can really concentrate on this fit and then I'll really concentrate on that fit and I think that'll be better. So where I want to cut it in half is I want a straight line between that point and this point. I mean if this doesn't work I can always do it again, you know. I actually have a bandsaw with a smaller blade so I'll use that and cut a real fine line down through there. I think that was the smart idea there. Now I'm going to have to get rid of this little corner. It's not going to fit in there. It's already starting to line up pretty good, but it needs a little work. I want to really get it a bit where you just can't even see a crack type of fit. I, it's rocking a little bit on the center deal. We're just going to work with this till I get it where I want it, and I'll bring you back. <music> Well, there you go. We'll just let that sit and dry for a while, and uh, then we'll try to do the other side. So 
seen And in this dream I came upon a man A man who left no footprints in the sand Dressed on the white we walked a long way For those in need we'd often stop and pray Our journey guided only by the night And yet we walked as if there was a light Then he said walk the straight and narrow every day Then he said head straight toward the light and never stray Then he said lend a helping hand along the way Then he said find the love of God on judgment day Well, I think this turned out pretty good. You know, you always want it better no matter how good it is. And uh, the only thing I think is I think I'm still too narrow compared to this side. It's smooth now. You can't even feel the transition, really. You just can't feel it. Maybe a hair right there, but but uh, it's, it's really good. And so what I would like to do now is uh, stain it I think a little bit so that it looks more like the other side and then I think I can get it more symmetrical because right now it's it's kind of hard to tell with this white wood versus this dark wood how big I am and everything and so I'm working on symmetry right now just trying to make it look exactly the same That just helps me dark, darken it up a little bit so I can see a little bit more where I need to. I can cut more out of this side here, I can see. And uh, just helps me see the symmetry a little bit better, even though that's not the final look, I don't think. pretty darn nice now compared to a mouse hole almost anything looks better that's not too bad um, the brown I think just by my eye which is not the best I think I need to darken the brown just a little bit maybe with just a touch of black so we'll try that thought I had the camera on there I've darkened it a little bit just I just I got the brown here in the cap and I just put I just dipped the brush just lightly in black and then you know wiped it off and then put it back in this brown and I'm just kind of fanning it out a little bit so that it kind of blends a little bit with the surrounding and and uh, you know so that you just don't see one spot of one color and just you know try to blend it a little it's there's no tellings. I 
you know, I can't say I'm the best at blending those colors, but I try. That doesn't look too bad. Um, you know, even up close, it looks pretty good. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, continue on, and then we'll touch up everything and maybe oil it down a little bit and make it look better. The customer had asked to save the finish, and at first I didn't think there was any finish to save, um, and it's still not the best. You can see how it's it's popped off. The finish has kind of come off in lines, and that's from the moisture, I think. But anyway, we I think if we oil it up, it's going to look just fine. I, I think the finish will actually come back and look halfway decent, believe it or not. Now I'm going to go through here and think about all the cleats and things that I might want to put in. My theory on cleats is, if it's under stress, it needs a cleat. These two joints really went back together fine without any stress. I don't really think they need a cleat at all. Especially being glued with type on, I don't think they'll ever come loose again. Conversely, this joint here was under, in the back, was under a tremendous amount of stress. I had to use those clamps, really tighten them down and get it to pull together. Now keep in mind, this is glued together with type bond as well. My theory is, if it's under stress, you ought to cleat it. So I think I'm going to put five cleats along here. I'm going to put one right dead center, one halfway, and then one towards the ends. You know, maybe an inch from the ends, from the end blocks. And they'll all be separated approximately an inch or so. And I think five cleats on there is just insurance, and I don't think that's enough that it's going to hurt the sound much. And uh, ordinarily, the main joint doesn't need a cleat, but in this case, because of the stress factor, because it was so pulled, I think I will. Friends, I just wanted to talk to you for a second. I want to thank you, first of all, for watching part one of this video. I really feel like this is going to be one of my best projects ever. I hope you enjoyed it up to this point. It does turn out really nice, I think. But I just wanted to tell you how things are going to go with the videos from now on. Because YouTube has changed all the rules and they keep giving you hassles and etc, etc, it seems to be that the way to upload videos these days is to upload them unlisted so nobody knows they're out there, if you will. Wait for YouTube to do their review. Once it's uh, approved, then I'll open it up to the rest of the world. Now, during that short process where they're unlisted, they will be available on Patreon, just so you know. So the folks on Patreon will probably see them about one week before they go live everywhere else. So if you uh, really like what you're seeing and you would like to support the channel on Patreon, I would very much appreciate that. And uh, thanks to all the folks who have already signed up on Patreon. I really do appreciate it. You don't know how much that means to me. Thanks for watching, and part two will be out soon.